This is a press conference for the first four. Unfortunately, we will not be able to hear from Texas A&M, Texas A&M Corpus Christi as their student athletes and coaches are not available. But our next press conference is scheduled for 5.05 where we will introduce Texas Southern student athletes. Again, our press conference for Texas A&M Corpus Christi has been canceled. Thank you. This is the press conference for the first four. Unfortunately, we will not be able to hear from Texas A&M Corpus Christi student athletes or coaches. Uh, the team is here in Dayton. They will be out on the floor for practice. But again, unfortunately, they were just unable to make it to the press conference. We will start up with Texas Southern uh, for student athletes at 5.05. Thank you.
If you're tuning in for the press conference of the first four for Texas A&M Corpus Christi, unfortunately, the Islanders had travel issues and are not able to make it for the press conference. So we will not be able to hear from student athletes and coaches from Texas A&M Corpus Christi. But our press conference coverage will continue with Texas Southern at 5.05. Thank you.
If you're tuning in for the press conference for the first four in Texas A&M Corpus Christi, unfortunately the Islanders had travel issues and are unable to make it. So we will not be able to hear from their student athletes and their coach, but they will be out on the floor for practice. It was just travel issues. Our press conference coverage of the first four, it will continue on time with Texas Southern at 5.05. Thank you. If you're joining us for the first four press conference, 
Unfortunately, because of travel issues, Texas A&M Corpus Christi is unable to join us. They will be out on the floor for practice. But again, Texas A&M Corpus Christi student athletes and their coach will not be available for the press conference. Our schedule, it will continue on time at 5.05 with Texas Southern. Thank you. If you're joining us for the first four press conference, unfortunately because of travel issues, Texas A&M Corpus Christi student athletes and coach will not be available for comment. The Islanders will practice at their normal time, but unfortunately 
they will not make it for the press conference. Our schedule will continue at 5.05 on time with Texas Southern student athletes. But as for the press conference with Texas a m Corpus Christi, uh, that will not happen. Thank you. If you're tuning in for the press conference for the first four, unfortunately, we're unable to hear from Texas A&M Corpus Christi student athletes. At this time, we would be expecting to hear from the Islanders' head coach, but that will not be the case because of travel issues. Texas A&M Corpus Christi will be on the floor 
as scheduled for practice, but again, because of travel issues, we're not able to make it to the press conference. Our schedule will continue on time at 5.05 as we will introduce student athletes from Texas Southern. Thank you. This is the press conference for the first four, but unfortunately, 
because of travel issues. Texas A&M Corpus Christi is not able to join us. They will be out on the floor for their scheduled time and practice, but uh, the Islanders will not be able to make it to the press conference as we're unable to hear from student athletes and the coach. Our schedule will be back on time at 5.05 as we introduce student athletes from Texas Southern. Thank you. This is the press conference for the first four. Unfortunately, we were unable to hear from Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They had travel issues. Uh, they will be on the floor for their scheduled practice, but they were unable to make it to the press conference. But uh, we will have student athletes from Texas Southern at 5.05.
as our schedule will be on time at 5.05 as we will meet the Tigers. Thank you.
This is the press conference for the first four as uh, we introduce the champions of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Texas Southern University. And joining us today at the center of the table is uh, Bryson Gresham. And at the end of the table is Jordan Carl Nichols. We ask that there's no flash photography, no video recording. And for those that are accessing the press conference on Zoom, if you could please use the hand feature and uh, we will make sure that you're able to ask your question. As for the folks here in the audience, uh, as you take the microphone, just provide your name and your affiliation and then uh, direct the question uh, towards our student athletes. Questions for Bryson Gresham or Jordan Carl Nicholas? How is the, the trip here and how does it feel just now that you guys have arrived? What, um, what are your kind of just feelings being here in Dayton? Bryson, you, you want to start? Yeah, I'll start it. Uh, actually, our trip was amazing, I should say. It was a nice, smooth trip, a uh, private plane, so I can't complain. And what was your second question? My bad. Just how are you feeling being here? Like I'm feeling good, <laughs> thankful, blessed. I'm just happy to be here, to be honest. Um, it's, it's exciting to be here again, you know, running it back and coming back from last year. Um, it's a better environment because, you know, not the whole COVID stress thing and everything, but it, it was a good it was a good experience. You know, we have some young guys that never experienced that, so it was good coming down here to Ohio and you know being able to experience all this. Other questions for Bryson and Jordan. You guys have a really experienced roster. How do you feel like that'll help you guys this year? Just, I mean, you guys got that experience last year. What, what does that do for you um, going into this tournament? Um, it means a lot. Um, you know, we added a few pieces, you know, including uh, Bryson right here. Bryson went to the Final Four last year. Um, other than going last year, I've been to the tournament. You know, we have P.J. Henry, he went to the tournament. And we also just have a lot of experience. So it helps because, you know, when you're in a dog fight or you're coming from behind, you know, we're not giving up. We have a lot of leadership. So, you know, we can hold each other accountable. So it helps us in the long run for sure. Uh, I think the experience helped us a lot because it's 68 teams, sir, and I feel like a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to win a game, especially in March Madness. So I think like all the experience that we have right now is like it's a favor in our hands. We have a uh, question via Zoom. Uh, Richard Dean, uh, would you like to ask your question uh, for our student athletes, uh, Bryson or Jordan? Okay. Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah this is for. Uh, both of y'all, um, I know you guys, you know, it's been a pretty tough, you know, 24 hours, you know, getting caught up about your opponent, but just tell me, what do you know about them and what do they do best and what kind of con concerns you about, about the Islanders? Uh, we just actually finished watching film on them and I can tell you one thing, they play hard for sure. So like, it's gonna be a good game, like competitive wise. Uh, they, got, they got a very good uh, core group of guards, very good uh, core group of bigs, so it's gonna be a good game. I just know they play hard. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, if you punch your ticket, you're definitely a good team. So we respect them. Um, I wouldn't say we're concerned or, you know, fear anything. We don't fear nobody. So we go into the drawing board, we're watching film on them. They definitely do play hard. They have a lot of good pieces, but we're uh, ready to play because, you know, we also do play hard too. Richard, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You know, you guys. Um, you know, this is a, you know something that TSU does every year. They schedule that tough non-conference schedule, and just talking. This is for both of y'all. Just talk about how important that you know. How did that help you get to where you guys are now when you're playing teams, and then also 
you guys have to be really confident about winning the tournament and also what y'all did to Florida this year. Jordan, do you want to start? Uh, yes, um, it helps us a lot. Um, at the beginning of the year, we were meshing together. You know, we had a lot of guys that came back, but we also had a lot of big pieces to add to the team. So it was a learning experience, and um, it taught us a lot about ourselves. Um, we were able to tell where we were at during the year and um, what kind of competition we can play with. And um, it was it was a good learning experience. And to where we started, to where we are now, um, it definitely paid off. And um, in the Florida game, I just think that's just an example of how good we can be. Um, and also how we played in our last two games in the conference tournament. Um, I just feel like, you know, the possibilities are endless if we can, you know, just lock down and play like that. So that's the biggest thing from this schedule. Bryson? Uh, to add on what he was saying, I'll say, uh, like, the competitiveness of our uh, non-conference schedule, like, it bring, it bring like, role games uh, bring teams together, but I'll say losing on the road was different for us. I feel like it built our character and molded this team together. So I feel like our non-conference schedule, like, literally molded this team together. Richard, thank you. Hi, Matt DeMarco, University of Dayton. Um, after making the tournament last year, um, how do you use that experience to springboard you into this year's tournament? Uh, I'll say uh, just like the, the things that I uh, learned, that I learned from last tournament was like just the small things, like a small thing could get you beat, a small thing could help you win the game. So that's, a, that's something I could take uh, to add on the, uh, for this year's team. Yeah, um, it, help, it helps a lot because, you know, you get put in this position and then, you know, some guys get nervous or it's their first time here. So, you know, definitely being here a couple times and just having guys that have been here a couple times, it helps because, you know, like I said, um, the, la the other question, you know, when you're down or, you know, you hit a little adversity, it's easy to overcome when you have that type of leadership. Tough start to your guys' season, and uh, you know, in December, you know, you found your guys beating a ranked Florida at the time. Uh, just kind of explain like your highs and lows of the season, and you know, what kind of got you here. Jordan, you want to start? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, everybody knows we started at like 0-7, um, and a lot of that was just us learning each other. I would like to say, um, you know, if you're paying attention to the games, they were close games. You know, a few of them, you know, we did get beat bad, but. A lot of them was just learning experiences. And I like to say we just ran out of time, you know. So it helps because, like, you go 0-7 and then you beat a ranked 20 team Florida, and it just shows you, like, you know, all right, we can not compete. It's not a fluke, you know what I'm saying? Everything that we've been working for is coming together. So, you know, that win really did help us because after that we went on a nice little run and then – you know, we just started to feel ourselves a little bit more. Bryson? Uh, I feel like the uh, the win over uh, number 20, uh, Florida, I felt like it was just pride. Like, you know, we got we got tired of losing. And, like, everybody human. So, like, you just keep getting beat up. Like, you know, you're going to fight back soon, sooner or later. Uh, Stuart Mason, VTech Communications. I want to ask you guys, uh, I've seen um, your league on TV uh, just talk about the – people don't realize, but talk about the atmosphere at those games and, and then talk about the swag in general. Bryson, you want to start? Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm happy that you said that. Uh, like I play basketball a lot for the different uh, conferences, and I can tell you one thing. The swag is literally uh, underrated, man. Like, they might not have a lot of talent, but you're going to get guys every, every game that play hard, 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 hard. Yeah, um, I've also been to, you know, two other conferences, and I think this is the best, you know, like just the atmosphere in the games, you know, from, you know, the coaches to the coaching staff to the people on campus. Everybody shows love and everybody's just into it. Um, as far as the talent, you're going to get everybody's best, especially, you know, us being champs. Everybody want to beat the champs, so we're getting everybody's best. And it's just, you know, it's a league that slept, slept on, but I don't think it should be because, you know, it's a lot of talent there. And, you know, sometimes it gets overlooked. 
This is the press conference for the Texas Southern Tigers as we're talking with the student athletes, Bryson Gresham and Jordan Carl and Nicholas. And if you'd like to use, uh, ask a question via Zoom, we ask that you use the hand feature. Um, any more questions uh, here for our audience, for our student athletes? Yeah, Jim Fox, Associated Press. After that 0-7 start, is there one person or something somebody said or something somebody did, one thing that changed from that start to where you are here today? I just think it was a matter of time, and it was good timing. Um, like I said, in that 0-7 run, um, we were just learning each other, you know, and, you know, we learned each other. So it was just perfect timing and good timing. So I think that, you know, it just all, all that had a, a good part in that. But, you know, we were talking to each other every day. We were uplifting each other. We never got down. We never start getting on ourselves or being, like, discouraged or anything. Um, we just kept on putting our head down, getting to work, you know, practicing hard, and just, you know, putting the pieces together. I kind of felt like uh, our pride kicked in, like I uh, said once before. I just felt like we just was tired of losing. So, like, we just stepped up, really, as a team. Laurel Failer from the Dayton Daily News. Um, he men Jordan mentioned your Final Four appearance last year with Houston. Um, what was that experience like for you? And a lot of us are just kind of learning about you guys right now. Um, what, what brought you to Texas Southern? Can you tell us a little bit about that transition? Uh, hold on. You got to ask the question one more time. Um, just your, fi your Final Four experience last year with Houston and um, just kind of what you took from that. Uh, it's kind of, it was, it was exciting. It's like once in a lifetime type of thing. I, I was kind of mad. It was, well, I wouldn't say mad. I was kind of sad it was in a bubble though. I didn't really get the experience, like the full crowd, I should say. But, uh, one thing I could take from, uh, leaving Houston and uh, coming to this team was just like, kind of like my role. Like I'm still like a role player here, but I feel like my role as a leader has like stepped, like I, I had to step up as a leader on this team. And I feel like, uh, it's kind of like a good, a good thing. Any other questions for our student athletes? Uh, tell us about your coach, Johnny Jones. I've heard a lot about him. Um, first, I'd like to say, you know, he, he's a great man. Before he was a coach, you know, he gave me the opportunity to come to Texas Southern and play for him. Um, he's an outstanding coach, too. Um, you know, he's, he's an unbelievable leader. You know, he pushes us. I like to say he's a player's coach. You know, he understands us. He's been he's been there. You know, he played for LSU. You know, he's coached NBA guys. So, you know, we all look up to him. And, you know, he, he does a lot for us. You know what I'm saying? He, he helps us out. You know, he talks to us on and off the court. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a close relationship. Bryson, your thoughts on uh, Coach Jones? Uh, to add on what uh, Jordan was saying, I'll say he's just a good guy. Like uh, outside of coaching, like he's very family oriented. Like when when you just looking for coaches, like you, that's the type of things you really look for. Like most, like especially in this uh, type of business, a lot of coaches like are just strictly business guys. I'll say like he's definitely very family oriented. Like he treats like his players like his family. Uh, another thing I could add on to, like I feel like you like you could talk to him about anything, not just basketball. Like if you ever was like late, like had a lot of things on your mind, like you just give him a call. He could always like just like help you out with a lot of life experiences. Any other questions for our student athletes? Uh, Mary Newman from University of Dayton. But um, we've touched on your road games and how that's different and then also the swag of the conference. But um, what's important to you all to try and bring that here? Like, what's the thing that you make sure you take from Texas and bring it to all your road games, and especially here? Bryson? I'll say our toughness. Our toughness and add on what you were just saying. I'll say, like, our swag, too. Like, we got a little swag when we be playing on the court. Like, you know, show a little attitude. It's good <laughs> to show emotion sometimes, especially in, the, in today's game. I would say just, you know, we're tough, you know, like I said, we're a league that slept on, but, you know, I feel like we're representing for the league, 
and everybody that gets looked over. So toughness, like you said, swag. We do, like Bryson said, we do have a little attitude and stuff, but it, I wouldn't even call it attitude. We're just very passionate about the game, you know? And, you know, that takes over when we get to playing. So y'all going to see tomorrow what type of, you know, energy we're going to bring. We have another question uh, via Zoom as uh, Richard Dean steps back in. Richard, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yes, Richard Dean at Houston Chronicle. Yeah, I've seen you guys play for, for a few years now and everything, but there's a lot of people on the Zoom call that aren't familiar with TSU basketball. How would you describe y'all's type of play and what are you, you know, what do you guys do best? Jordan, would you like to start? Fast, running gun, you know, defense, very good defense, you know. I feel like that's what we like to pride ourselves on is defense, rebounding, and, you know, just being strong and tough. So, you know, that's what we pride ourselves on. You know, we got we got in, we got uh, we got real into the, you know, the off season. We got real serious about that this year. So, you know, we like to say level five and that's that's what we like to say, you know, so just really level five about everything we do. Uh, to add on what he was saying, I'll say uh, just like our toughness, really. Honestly, our toughness is just competing at a high level. I feel like we could play with anybody in the country if we competing at our level five level. Any other questions for our student athletes? Bryson, Jordan, outstanding season. Good luck tomorrow night. Enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah, have a great day. Bryson Gresham, Jordan Carl Nicholas, and student athletes from Texas Southern University. Uh, soon we will be joined by their head coach as uh, we'll learn more about the Tigers.
At this time, we'd like to welcome the head coach of the Texas Southern Tigers, Johnny Jones, the Tigers champions of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, a record of uh, 18 and 12. Questions for Coach Jones. Laurel Thaler from the Dayton Daily News. Welcome to Dayton. Um, you guys got off to a rough start to the season, really came on late. What do you think um, was the difference? Was, was there, um, just what, are, what were you seeing down the stretch from your team that maybe you weren't seeing early on? Uh, uh, for us, um, we play uh, each year. One of the uh, toughest, uh, sometime number one um, uh, strength of schedule in the country uh, because of uh, the teams uh, that we wind up playing is generally um, Gonzaga. Um, we'd go to Baylor, uh, you, you name it. So uh, the top part of our schedule is against more of the Power Five uh, type schools, and then we get into a conference play, and it's more of teams that are uh, generally built like us um, at the end of the day. Uh, but at, uh, our deal and our focus even playing those Power Five schools during the non-conference when we're generating funds and everything to help um, at the end of the day with, with our program. Our focus is mostly about, are we getting better, uh, playing against a stiff competition, what improvements um, have we made from game to game, and if we're able to show improvements, uh, that's a huge sign at the end of the day for us. We're 0-7, uh, the guys hadn't lost their way, they were still extremely focused throughout the year, and we wind up knocking off a um, top 20 team in Florida um, at their place, and that let me know at that time that the guys were still in a good place um, at the end of the day, and uh, so and that was not long after that, we're starting to get into our conference play. but. I learned a long time ago, uh, just from uh, church, one of my pastors used to use the term, say, sometime you win and sometime you learn, and as long as you're learning, you never lose. And uh, so we did a lot of learning uh, at the beginning of the year. <laughs> and uh, so we're fortunate to stay locked in and focus on the big picture uh, and getting ready, and uh, we're fortunate to be sitting here today. Questions uh, online, as again, uh, you can use our Zoom feature. We ask that you just... Now use the hand, and Richard Dean has uh, stepped on here. Richard, your question for Coach Jones. Uh, yes, Richard Dean at Houston Chronicle. Coach, when I talked to you almost 24 hours ago, you just found out who you were playing. You hadn't had much chance to even find out about your opponent. So in the last 24 hours, what, what have you learned about him? Um, luckily, just for me with the program, because obviously they're sitting there in the, in the uh, state of uh, Texas, uh, we scrimmaged them, not this coach, uh, but their prior coach, uh, a couple of times over the last uh, couple of two or three years. Uh, so this is obviously a different team. Uh, but we've learned a lot uh, about them. I'm uh, fam very familiar with the conference uh, that they're in, and so I follow their scores uh, really throughout the year. I am familiar with the head coach and the great job that he had done there at Creighton. He was assistant there in the uh, state uh, Division One school in Texas uh, prior to uh, when I was a head coach at, uh, um, at uh, previous schools, say, for instance, University of North Texas. So very familiar with him. But uh, I know they've got a good guard, uh, good guards. They play extremely fast in terms of their motion. They rebound the basketball um, as well. And uh, they very good up-tempo uh, style basketball teams. So uh, uh, they like to get to the free throw line uh, because how fast they play. But they do a great job in sharing the basketball. I think they average at about 15 uh, assists a game, so they're a very balanced basketball team, and, and they've uh, won their conference. And uh, people are trying to tell me that they wind up uh, coming in fourth place in their conference, but they wind up uh, winning the tournament. And I remind people that we came in third place uh, a year ago in um, our conference and wind up winning the uh, championship as well. So when teams are playing well at the right time, I think that's got to be your focus on them. And I think they're one of those teams that have won maybe um, seven out of eight or eight out of nine of their last games. A question here on the far side of the room. Uh, Connor Bruce, University of Dayton. Um, so you're coming off, you know, winning your conference. You know, so how do you use that uh, momentum of winning a conference, you know, coming in? Selection Sunday was just a few days ago. It's been a quick turnaround. So just how do you use that momentum uh, in here tomorrow? Yep, it's a great question. The uh, big thing is you want to be uh, playing well at the right time. And the right time is when you're talking about 
uh, February and March. You want to make sure that your team is trending the right way and, and peaking at the right time. And uh, so uh, our uh, conference tournament, I think, is a great sign of that. And when you're playing well at the right time, we're fortunate uh, that we had the bye. We played on, on Wednesday, had Thursday off. Other teams had to play that Thursday and then come back and play on that Friday where we picked it back up. And I thought our team continued to get better, trending the right way, and we want to make sure that we utilize that. So playing this early game, it's not like we've got to wait till the end of the week. We just finished playing on Saturday. Now we've got to turn around again and play tomorrow, and our guys should uh, still be intact. And uh, as coach, I hadn't had a chance to confuse them uh, that much so we can get back on the court and play. Jumping back on Zoom, Daniel Rodriguez, uh, your question for, for Coach. Hey, Coach. Daniel Rodriguez with um, Diff League with Daniel. My question is, I wanted to ask you about um, what's the difference between this team this year compared to last year's team that went to the first four, won that game, played Michigan. What is the main difference between these two teams? Uh, the main difference, I think, with this basketball team, we had a couple of pieces that we lost. Um, uh, from last year's team and one of our starters. But we feel like that we gained uh, through the transfer market. One of those guys in Bryson Grisham, who uh, started for Houston 19 games last year, played 17 minutes a game. Uh, he's with us now as a post guy at 6'9", and um, unbelievable size and strength. That's what we were lacking, I think, against a good Michigan team. Uh, number one, I think, number one seed Michigan team a year ago. Uh, our inside play to be able to battle with those guys. So I think uh, our inside presence uh, that we have would be the big difference uh, from um, a year ago uh, to this year's team, which is a, a strong positive force. Daniel, do you have a follow-up question? Um, no, I do not. Thank you again. Thank you, Daniel. Questions in the audience? Go right here at the front. Just going back to that Florida win, was there anything that happened right before that? Any, um, anything you had said to the guys that kind of, you think, made a difference in that game? Or um, just what was the difference in that one? And just expand on that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, our focus, uh, you know, especially in those early games during the season, it's pretty much your, your motto, one of our mottos, is make sure that we finish everything that we do. Um, out there on the floor, be it rebounding or screening action or whatever it is, just make sure that you're finishing everything strong. I think these guys uh, did a great job of, uh, I would say, staying um, focused, um, especially after setbacks or whatever that we had. And going in that game, we just wanted to make sure that we were continuing to improve. And uh, the way that you, we kind of uh, grade ourselves, it's important to play as hard as we can every second, every play, and finish in place every second, every play. I thought in that game we came out maybe every second, every play, things went our way. We got to the 50-50 balls. We made the tough plays. We made the tough shots. We, we did all the little things that made the big difference. And for us to go in at halftime that way, you obviously know you got 20 minutes. Uh, left to go back out there, and then we got off to a great start uh, there in the second half. So I thought everything uh, just aligned for us uh, in that game at the end of the day. But uh, the the beauty about it, you know, we've got a couple of guys that still left on this team um, a couple of years ago. And, and I always go into all these games now playing at Oregon. We were able to win there before, and they were a rated team. Um, we we've won at Baylor. We've won at Texas A&M. So we've, we've had those things to happen to us. And to tell these guys, you don't know uh, which one of those games is going to be a get-up a game for us if we're not playing as hard as we possibly can. And uh, so they uh, were able to do that in that game. And we came close, although we didn't win some of those games. We were in seven coming up to that point. We came extremely close to that, maybe Washington and a couple of other places that we played uh, early in the season, just uh, wasn't able to get over that hump. Other questions for Coach Jones? Here we have a question from uh, Richard online. Richard Dean, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Coach, you, got have, you have a rotation of 10 players, and uh, I think they all average at least 13 minutes a game, and no one – plays more than 25. You didn't have anybody score in double figure. You know, they're all capable of scoring. Just talking about the team chemistry and how unselfish these guys are to make this all work. 
Well, uh, thanks, uh, Richard. I think that was one of the challenges of coming into the season, especially with the core guys we had returning from last year. Then had the addition of uh, two new guys and P.J. Henry, who started at, or played at Hartford last year and played 32 minutes at point guard against uh, the Baylor team that won a national championship. Bringing that core of guys in, didn't want guys to get in practice and sell and uh, just trying to get in a rut in terms of just finding their position. So we've had over 17 or 18 different start lineups uh, throughout the year. And I think our guys understood the focus that they needed to have, meaning that they could impact our game so they could maybe start next game. So therefore, their practice habits and everything was the same. They were great guys, competed, extremely competitive. And if they weren't starting, they were looking for the opportunity to get into the game to impact the game the right way. So it cut down on the pouting and the guessing and all the other stuff uh, from our basketball team. So I think as a unit, uh, it helped them uh, become even closer. The chemistry's been uh, great on our basketball team. And with that rotation of 10 guys on any given night, any of those guys are very capable of going out and having big games. And although we didn't have any guy on our team, um, although we won the conference championship last year and went to the tournament, we had zero guys on the all-conference team uh, this year. Uh, they didn't make first team or second team. Um, and, and that may have been because we didn't have anybody scoring double figures. Uh, so unfortunately, it may have hurt our guys in, in terms of some uh, people voting. But at the end of the day, I'm glad I've got a great group of guys that were focused on the big picture. It wasn't about individual accolades. It was about their team. And I think that's the reason that uh, we we're sitting here today, uh, because they were more motivated at the end of the day about what they could do as a group, uh, more so than individuals. Richard, do you have another question for Coach? Yeah, I have a, a little follow-up question. Coach, uh, you're a, you know, a, a seasoned team. You know, looking at the roster, and I see all these seniors and grad students. You know, you got experienced players. You know, with the experienced players, and also the fact that you guys played in this first four a year ago and won it. I, I think your confidence level has to be pretty high, and the fact that you have experienced players helps you so much more. Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, on, on on senior night, uh, we had nine guys come out uh, to need to be celebrated, right? And if you're sitting there in the stands and you're a fan, you're trying to figure out, wow, you know, how's this team going to look next year? We've, we've got all these seniors. We're only four of those guys are leaving uh, the team that doesn't have any more eligibility because of the uh, COVID um, deal that they allowed them to come back and play an additional year. Five of those guys will, will, will be back with us. So that experience uh, that, that, that we've got on this basketball team uh, with those nine uh, seniors and these other guys that have graduated, it, 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 it means a lot, uh, and it's one of the reasons that we sit in the position uh, here because several of those guys were on that team a year ago. And at the end of the day, uh, I thought I was going to lose those guys because they had the opportunity because they'd already graduated uh, to leave and uh, either go and transfer and go play in another program uh, if they felt like the mission was accomplished and they'd done what they needed to at Tech Southern to go play professionally. Uh, but my son's one of those uh, players that is well, and he and his friends uh, and teammates uh, wind up going on social media and putting hashtag run it back, and meaning that they were all going to return and do this again. They weren't going to leave. They weren't transferring out. Uh, they wanted to um, uh, come back and see if they could go back to back. And as a coach, I couldn't have been more excited because, one, it cut down on recruiting and uh, me worrying with those guys coming back. and. Uh, we had a, a great core, and, and they did a great job of coming back and focused and, and again, worrying about the right things. Question in the, uh, in the back of the room. Coach, you kind of led me to this uh, question, but talk about it, having a chance to coach your son. Well, I tell you, it's, it, it's been unique. I've, I've, um, <clears throat> when I hung up my sneakers uh, back in 84-85 um, uh, as a point guard and off shooting guard at LSU, um, <clears throat> I've been coaching ever since. Uh, Dale Brown hired me uh, as an assistant. I sit on his side for 13 years there as an assistant coach uh, before leaving there in, in uh, 97. And so I've been coaching. Uh, my son was uh, born in uh, 98 and uh, still coaching. So I've been a Division One basketball coach his entire life. So never had a chance to be a part like of his AAU programs and any of those things and had a chance to, to be around. We could obviously go and kick it around and work in individual skill, work in the gym. 
but to be able to be there on the sideline and coach him and his buddies, never had that experience. And when this opportunity presented itself, uh, it was like a dream come true. It was something that I've always wanted and wished would happen. And uh, I think, uh, you know, obviously God put us in a unique situation uh, here because um, I left Baton Rouge and uh, after uh, being head coach there at LSU and, and going to uh, University of Nevada with one of my former assistants. And we played out there and went to the Sweet 16. And I got this job. And my son decided not to stay in Nevada. He wound up coming with me. And uh, it's been a special four years. Not only, you know, that he only had really three years left, but the, because of COVID, he didn't have an opportunity to play for me for four years like a regular student. And so it's, it, it's been great. And uh, it's been kind of an emotional time for me on senior night, his last home, home game there. And, uh, but it's been a blessing. And I'm just fortunate uh, that we've been able to win because we won three state championships in high school. We went out to Nevada. We went to the Sweet 16. And I was be dang if I was going to be the only coach who didn't win a championship with. <laughs> so it was good last year. It took a lot of pressure off. And for us to repeat, it come back this year. And, uh, you know, according to him, it's all him. It's not anything to do with me. And so he, so he brought that win into us. So it's been great uh, coaching him. Any other questions for Coach Jones? We do have one online here as uh, Daniel Rodriguez steps back in. Daniel, your question. Hey, Coach. Uh, my, my last question I wanted to ask you. After finding out you're making tournament and you're playing Corpus Christi, how fast after they announce that do you guys go over tape and look at film at Corpus Christi? Is it almost instant, or do you guys maybe wait a little bit, celebrate, or it's just always back to work? Well, we actually um, we were at a little celebration party where a guest uh, watching – uh, the um, the uh, brackets uh, be released and uh, right afterwards as a team uh, when it, the um, the last team was announced we got up hugged the guys told them we would um, see them in the morning and it would give them the information that they needed we went straight back to the office downloaded the games whatever that we needed I gave the scout to one of our coaches that was going to have the other uh, two assistants would also take a look and our video guy was there with us and uh, so we immediately got to it and uh, tried to get as much extensive information as we possibly could uh, on the phone and, and, and watching these guys and then just getting back with each other and uh, trying to find out what we've seen and uh, what was the positives and negatives and uh, start putting together a game plan. So, yes, and when the game comes up as quick uh, as it did, like you see it yesterday and you're playing on tomorrow, it's pretty quick turnaround against a, a, a opponent that you're not familiar with. Uh, but I guess that's the beauty, really, of, of what we do. And uh, so it's a crash course for us, and uh, we're excited to, to have the opportunity to do that. Another question here uh, via Zoom as uh, Patrick Warren, go ahead, your question to Coach. Hey, Coach, how you doing? This is uh, Pat Patrick Waring from the MBS Sports Hour. Hi, Patrick. Uh, I just wanted to ask you a little bit just about being an HBCU with you coming back in the tournament uh, two years in a row now with a lot of attention, of course, a, a lot of needed attention on HBCU programs. Can you just kind of talk about that and kind of what it means to uh, represent yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it was exciting for us uh, last year. And a uh, good thing for me, uh, you know, just been there in Baton Rouge for the number of years. I've uh, been there uh, and for me with Southern University, which is another HBCU uh, there in, in, in Baton Rouge. And, and uh, knowing Ben Job and all the other coaches that was there and becoming familiar with them and around their program. So when this opportunity presented itself, I knew exactly um, what it was getting into there in, in, in Houston. Uh, because I was familiar with uh, Texas Southern, uh, one, primarily because of Mike Davis, who was the head coach there at the time, and, and uh, us uh, having a chance to play against um, each other. But uh, for me to be here sitting in the seat and the job that Mike had done in tradition uh, there at Texas Southern University, for us to come into the tournament and win a game uh, last year uh, during the tournament, it was great. We're excited. I think State wind up winning uh, on that night as well. And uh, so I think one of the good things so that we can continue to try and change the narrative 
in the conversation if we can continue to put good teams together, make a great showing, uh, continue to make a great showing in the uh, tournament, uh, that some great things can happen for us. And uh, so our job is to make sure that we're representing uh, all the HBCUs in, in the right fashion and in the right way when that opportunity presents itself. Coach Jones, we appreciate your time. Good luck tomorrow night. Have fun. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time, and uh, go Tigers. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. I'm mad at you didn't have those uh, Dayton students didn't ask more questions. <laughs> <laughs>
The Indiana Hoosiers will be joining us here shortly, but uh, just a reminder, uh, no flash photography, uh, no video recording, and if you could, please silence your cell phones. Uh, those that are accessing the press conference via Zoom, if you could use the hand feature uh, to ask a question, we'll make sure that you're able to get that question to a student athlete or coach. Thank you. Welcome the student athletes of the Indiana Hoosiers out of the Big Ten Conference, record of 20 and 13. On the end of the table is Tra Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, in the middle is Xavier Johnson, and uh, closest to me is uh, Race Thompson. We will uh, start with questions here in the front row. Uh, Trace, I know you guys probably aren't allowing yourselves to think too big picture, but when we talked to you a year ago around this time, you know, you kind of admitted you had one foot out the door before Coach Woodson came in. You were sort of thinking about life after Indiana, but you wanted to come back kind of for moments like these. I mean, is there validation in a, a, a moment like this, or do you just sort of think like there's not validation until the journey's over and maybe you won some games and that sort of thing? Um, even just – what happened in the Big Ten tournament, honestly, just solidified me coming back and how it was such a great decision. Just the joy that that brought me and just doing that with my teammates and experiencing that was just huge. But yeah, again, you can't get too high. You can't get too high on yourself because we still got a lot of work to do and um, we're here playing in day. We play tomorrow, so we're ready to gear up and go. Uh, in regards to addressing our student athletes, if you could provide your name and your affiliation, that'd be great. Thank you. Race two. Is there some benefit from just playing a bunch of games right in a row and just getting right back out on the floor here uh, without any of that, uh, any loads, that confidence you guys built up over the weekend, just carrying it over? Um, yeah, I feel like we got a lot of confidence coming in. Um, I'm playing a whole bunch of games back to back. And it, it, it's important and, and, it, and it tells us about our legs. And now that we got a day, well, you got to win to go to the next, next day. And we got a day off. So it, it's going to be a, be a better team. Trace or, or Race, you want to? Uh, yeah, I definitely think there's some benefit to uh, just uh, not having much time between games. Uh, we play well in Indy, and hopefully uh, we can put that together and carry it over here and get a win. Second row. Uh, Chris Hagan, Fox 59. Trace, uh, the benefit of during the season, there were so many close games you couldn't close out, but to be battle tested last week and find a way to get through and bust the door down. What kind of confidence does that give you knowing that all these games could be just like that? Um, it's a really big confidence booster, honestly. I think that um, the Big Ten is a gauntlet and um, we competed with almost every team every night. And so just finally getting over that hump um, in the Big Ten tournament and winning a few of those games, I think really boosted our confidence, so. We'll stay in the second row. Uh, Jeff Rapp, Johns, Pigs.com. Xavier, your thoughts on the two guys sitting up there with you. They were both had the opportunity to leave, right, you know, in the portal and all that. They stayed. Give me a player's view. What have they meant to this team and this program with you guys getting back to the NCAA tournament? Uh, I mean, it, they meant a lot because uh, when I first got here, you know, they, they, they opened up with, uh, with, 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 cl with close arms. Uh, they both were close. Uh, they, they kept every, everything close. Everything was family. From from day one, and, and they're they're a big big part of our uh, program, and, and they're they're big, the next step. In the front row, Gracie Barr inside the hall. Xavier, yesterday you tweeted they'll pay for it after the selection show. Um, just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on where the committee um, evaluated your resume and if that's going to make you play with more of a chip on your shoulder. Uh, it's definitely going to make us play with a chip on our shoulder. Uh, I mean, I'm not disappointed that we didn't make it, but uh, uh, we made it so. I mean, we're going to have to come, come ready to play. And, and I'm the two guys next to me are going to get the team ready to play, too, as well. And, and it just didn't put a chip on my shoulder. It put the whole team on a chip. Uh, we're all going to play with a chip on our shoulder, honestly. 
Second row. Yeah, uh, Kevin Brockway, CNHI Indiana. Uh, this is for either Trace or Race. Um, what, what have you learned from about Wyoming in the last 24 hours? And uh, they have a, kind of a physical post score, and I know you've seen a lot of those in the Big Ten, but your, your thoughts on matching up with uh, Graham Ike? Um, yeah, he, first off, he's a great player. Um, lefty, um, likes to back down and go to the basket. But they also have a point guard who's 6'7", um, and he likes to back down as well. So um, we got to just be locked in on defense, take stuff that they want to do away, and then um, just communicate with each other. I think we have the best defense in the league, and what we do in the Big Ten, and one of the best in the country. So we're just going to have to show it. Second row. Uh, Dustin DePierre, Bloomington. Uh, X Trace, the pick and roll you guys have started to use more and more over the last couple of weeks is obviously it seems like it's added a lot to your offense. I mean, just how did just the chemistry come together with that, and how much do you think that's ex been, has expanded what you guys have been able to do uh, offensively over the last couple of weeks? Uh, I mean, honestly, we, we've been doing this since day one. Uh, uh, me going off the ball screen, going getting down here, and Trace, I see Trace just running, running from the, off the screen and, and, and jumping, jumping as high as he can, can to get the ball. It, it's amazing to me how how how. how, how how athletic this dude is. Because uh, when I first came here, it was, I was actually shell shocked. I'm still shell shocked at how many times he could just jump. Yeah, kind of going off what X said, we've always had that connection. But um, I think overall, in the last few weeks, uh, we talked to Coach Woodson. I think that, especially with a lot of bigger guys that we're playing against, bigger, slower guys, I think that the pick and rolls worked a lot better. So we'll go to the first row here. Keegan Nixon with the Rivals.com. Race, with these quick turnarounds, what's it like having a guy like Cliff Marshall to help get you guys prepared, get you hydrated, and get your bodies in right shape? Uh, yeah, Coach Cliff, he's always uh, pushing us uh, electrolytes, uh, making us stretch, making us foam roll, uh, giving us massage guns. Uh, and I mean, really just sending us stuff to help us take care of our bodies. So, I mean, he definitely helps us a lot and uh, learn about taking care of our bodies. Uh, he always tells us to be a pro. So uh, with him, uh, he just really gives us uh, all the tools we need to do that. Let's go to the back of the room. Two-part question here. Can you take me back to when you guys were real little kids playing the game and how many times you played this tournament in your mind? Second question, emotionally, when you went back to your dorm room, when you're at your apartment back on campus, what was your emotional moment? You're like, yeah, I'm going dancing and stuff like that. Were you fist pumping? What was that like? Uh, so I guess I'll start. Um, so back when I was a little kid, I always just dreamed of playing in the championship game and hitting free throws and for the win. I won't say what team it was because I'll tell you it wasn't Indiana. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> it's always been a dream playing in the tournament. Um, and finally getting that opportunity I think is really cool. But after um, – after the, we got selected, um, I was really relieved because I was really anxious leading up to it, especially going through it, not seeing our name until the final uh, bracket was, uh, was a little nerve-wracking. But um, finally just having that uh, like pressure off your shoulders and you're finally playing for something, playing for a national title, I think is really cool. Xavier, you'd like to answer that question? Uh, for me, I just always watched it. I mean, I can't really say with team either. So, uh, but I mean, when, once I see our name called, uh, I mean, I, th I think a lot of people see my, see my uh, reaction. I was kind of, I was, I was, I was happy that we made it, but I was kind of disappointed by where we, where we fell at. But I mean, I'm just happy to be playing and, and you know, we're ready to compete. And race? Uh, I was definitely excited. My whole life, I'd watched the NCAA tournament. Uh, Dreamed of playing for national championship. What team? I don't honestly. I don't. I just wanted to play. <laughs> I just wanted to play it for real. And then uh, just that sigh of relief when uh, uh, we finally made it. Uh, like Trey said, it was one of the last teams uh, to be called off. So uh, I mean, definitely just felt good to make the tournament, and that's what we set out to do this year. So we take care of it. Let's go to the second row, far side. Mike Peckham from uh, Peaks.com. This is a question for Xavier or Race. When, when Trace kind of found another level in the second half of the Michigan game, what was the impact to the rest of the team at that point and moving forward for the rest of the tournament? Uh, I mean, it was big time. Uh, I mean, because we know what he's capable of. And, and when, it, when Coach jumped on him and, that, and, and said something to him, uh, I think, I think it, it just hit a lot of – it hit everybody in the whole room. And, and it hit everybody just had a different energy come out in the second half and, and for the rest of the games that we played. Let's go to the uh, second row here on the near side. Yeah, Race, Mike Schumann with the Daily Hoosier. You've been here longer than anybody, waiting for this moment longer for, than anybody. What, what in your mind clicked these last couple of weeks to make this team different 
than, than any of the other teams that you were on before? Uh, I mean, we were right there. A couple of the teams that I've been on, uh, we weren't really, like, been on the last four in, been there. But uh, this team really felt like we could really feel that we were right there. We were able to play in the tournament. And uh, we really just talked about locking in for a, a month and taking care of business. And we ended up doing that. And now we're playing the NCAA tournament. And it's really exciting for us. Front row. Uh, Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Um, this is a question for Race and Trace, kind of a two-parter. Um, one, it looked like, I think it was after the Michigan game, uh, Race, you kind of gave a, gave Trace a hug uh, in the post-game line. What, what do you guys remember about that moment? And also, what is what has just been your guys' favorite part of, of seeing each other grow kind of throughout your college years? Uh, uh, yeah, I gave him that hug because uh, me personally didn't have my best game that game. and. Uh, Luckily, uh, Jordan Geronimo was able to step up and have a great game. Uh, Trace obviously had a great second half. Xavier had a second half. I mean, uh, I mean, I didn't really play much in the second half, so I was just telling him, like, yes, bro, like, thank you. Thank you, bro. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. Uh, I've seen Trace grow not only on the basketball court, but uh, just, like, in life. And uh, it's fun to watch. Uh, and I think he could say the same. Yeah, kind of what Ray said. Um, I don't even remember it, really. I was so – amped up and just surreal that we won. But at the same time, just watching race grow over the years, and especially just from last year to this year, because last year he was already such a big presence. But even going further and how much he's grown his game from three-point shooting to just rebounding and just overall, he's been one of our best players on the team. I think it's been huge for us, and we wouldn't be in the position we are without him. Let's go to the second row here. Jeff Rabjohns, Peaks.com. Trace, this is for you. You said something like um, you took about 20 minutes in your first conversation with Mike Woodson or something like that for you to decide, hey, uh, this is a guy I want to play for. What was it and sort of how has that played out throughout this year with your relationship and, and developing un under, under Coach Woodson? Well, I think Coach Woodson's just the big emphasis with him was family and um, – and I trusted, I trusted him from the get-go and what he was planning on doing, what our goals were. And one of those goals was winning a Big Ten title, and we were one game short of that, and then um, winning a national title. And we have a chance to compete in that. So um, right now, there's nothing wrong. And um, I'm really glad I decided to came back. Stay in the second row. Chris Hagan, Fox Indianapolis for Trace. Growing up in Indiana, you know how much basketball means to Hoosiers. I know you're playing for your teammates, you're playing for each other, but do you feel that sleeping giant of the IU fan base and how much this means to get back into the tournament of such, after such a long drought? What kind of pride do you take in, in carrying that banner? It's a huge pride, honestly, um, especially just, um, just you can feel a different type of energy in the air, especially after that Big Ten tournament run that we had. Um, it's, it's when we're playing good ball, it's just a, the whole state is gets behind us and I think it's really cool and I know that now coming here today and we're going to see a lot of red in the stands and I honestly can't wait to get back on the floor honest so let's go second row here Xavier Mike Schumann with the Daily Hoosier to, to who or to what do you credit your kind of mid-season acceleration of your level of play uh, I mean three weeks ago my grandfather died and uh, I mean, it just hit me, hit me a lot, and I was playing well before that, and and he's one of my biggest fans, and I know he's still watching, and and, and I dedicate my game to him. Second row, Dustin DePierre again, Bloomington Herald Times X. Also, uh, Trace mentioned uh, their point guard Hunter Maldonado, six seven guy. It seems like it's kind of a contrast of styles between you two. Obviously, you like to get up and run. It seems like he likes to play really slow and deliberate. What's your kind of read on that matchup at this point? What's impressed you about him, and what do you, how do you see that sort of contrast playing out? Uh, I mean, he's yeah. I, I believe he's a good player. Uh, uh, playing in the Midwest, uh, averaging 18 points and six assists. Uh, that's that's big time. Uh, but I mean, I, I don't think he has, he's played against the type of guard that, that's that's actually gonna 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 pressure him a lot up, up the floor. And, and so I mean, I'm just ready to compete tomorrow against him. First row, near side. <clears throat> Sorry, Ag Zach Osterman, uh, Indianapolis Star. I wanted to kind of rewind to talking about the pick and roll. You talked about how good Trace is around the rim, how quick he can get up, how often, things like that. But how much have you seen him improve in, in kind of the start of those plays, bringing the screen, the handoff, his footwork, and kind of getting into the role, and really just kind of knowing that the chemistry between the two of you, have always knowing where the two of you are when you are kind of attacking that way? Uh, I mean, I mean, honestly, it was just 
I, I think it's just God giving talents for him because uh, he honestly had always had it. Uh, we just started doing it more and more constantly down the stretch and, and, and figured out that was something that was working. And and now, now we're gonna we're gonna keep doing keep working on keep doing the two man game and, and get my get my other team, other teammates involved as well because we got great great all around pieces as well. Just a couple more questions here. Let's go to the back row. All you guys know that um, uh, Mike Woodson is uh, Indiana uh, basketball. Uh, what has he brought to the program this year? Um, honestly, Coach Woodson to me has just brought a light. I feel like Indiana basketball has been in the darkness for so long now, five or six years, drought, no tournament, no even competing. Um, so just him coming in and just – even in his first year, um, doing the things that he's done, like beating Purdue, who's beat, beat us eight straight times, beating Michigan, um, and then making the tournament. I think it's just, it's huge, not only for for him, but for the state and for everyone that roots for us. And so I think he's given this program hope, and um, I can't wait to see what happens in the future. Xavier, Race, you want to add to that? Uh, I would say I agree with Trace. Uh, uh, the program has been in dark for a little while. I haven't made the tournament, and uh, him coming in, his his one of his main messages is that's what we're gonna do. Like we're not gonna set our goals any shorter than the Big Ten championship and the national championship. That's what we're gonna set out to do every year, and we fell short of the Big Ten championship this year, but we made the NCAA tournament and have a chance to play for the national championship. So I think he he just brings that light to Indiana basketball. A question via Zoom, uh, Patrick. A question for our student athletes. Yes, guys. Uh, this is Patrick Waring from the MBS Sports Hour. Uh, first question is is for Xavier. Um, I'm here in the D.C. area. I know you, I know you played at O'Connell. Just wanted to kind of uh, just kind of talk about your journey a little bit. Kind of who who helped you get to this level? Um, anybody that you want to thank from back home? Uh, I mean, the first person I want to start with is my dad. Uh, my dad, he got in the gym with me me eight hour, eight hours a day. Uh, when I was a sophomore in, in, in high school, and when I was told I wasn't gonna make varsity in my sophomore year, and he put he pushed my limits. Honestly, that's the first person I want to start with, and the, and, the, and the second and third person is my is uh, Keith Stevens and, and, and Joe Wooten, uh, my, my 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 high school coach and my uh, AAU coach. First row. In. You guys played three games in three days there, all of them pretty intense, played a lot of minutes each game. What was it like uh, physically uh, in regards from the fatigue factor Saturday night when you were done, and what have you tried to do between then and now to, to have fresh legs for tomorrow night? Um, honestly, with me, um, with all the work that we put in this summer, I, I didn't think it was um, that big of a deal for me. And then just just going on that run, um, I was actually just ready to play. Like, I was ready to go. After the first game, I was ready to play the next one. After the next game, I was ready to play the next one. I don't think, I think that's how all of our teammates were. And um, even with that Iowa game that we had, I feel like we were still competing at a really high level. And I feel like um, everyone was wanting to win and uh, we set out to win. So um, I don't think fatigue's big for us when you're trying to win a championship, so. Second row. Yeah, Kevin Brock, with CNHI. Uh, Race, you guys have had, I think, five straight games that have gone down to the wire uh, here. Uh, you know, you won two, lost three. I'm just curious about that experience and how that can help you if you have another game like that uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, those games definitely help. Uh, we sit down and uh, break down the film after every game, and uh, we see the things that beat us, and we see the things that help us win the games. And at the end of the day, for us, we end up beating ourselves most of the time. And, uh, that's something that we watch on film and that coming in the NCAA tournament that we've learned and can't let that happen. We apologize, but that's going to be it for our questions. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck tomorrow night.
At this time, we're joined by the head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, Mike Woodson. Coach, if you'd like to start just with a statement. Well, the only statement I got is I'm thrilled to death to be back in the big dance. And the 17 guys that have worn this uniform this season had, has had a lot to do with that. The fact that they gave me an opportunity to coach them and stay on board uh, means a great deal to me from a coaching standpoint. Uh, but like I told them, uh, when we sat in the assembly hall yesterday and got the message that we were going to the big dance, it was great and to celebrate, but the celebration is behind us. We got to look forward and, and uh, I thought we had a pretty good practice today to start preparing for Wyoming. Back of the room. Marco, University of Dayton. Coach, you were a former student athlete at IU, um, led your team to the Sweet 16. Uh, what does it mean to you now that you're able to coach this team? No, it means a great deal. I mean, when Scott Dawson, our AD, called and asked to speak to me when I was in New York as an assistant with the Knicks, um, I was thrilled to death. He flew into New York, sat down with me, and. He and I had a great two and a half, three hour meeting and one thing led to another. A couple weeks later, I was offered the job. And um, for me, it's like a dream come true. Um, you know, I've been in basketball a long time. Uh, I wore a number of hats uh, as a player, as a head coach, as an assistant coach. But to be able to come back and coach your alma mater, a place where you know, you really, where the university was really good to me as a player when I played for Coach Knight. Uh, and I think I played for probably the greatest college coach that's ever graced the floor in Bob Knight. Um, it's like a dream come true. So it's good to be back. Let's go to the third row. Uh, Michael Presti, NCAA.com. What do you remember about your experience in the NCAA tournament as a player? It's a grind. Um, you know, preparation is so important. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's excite exciting times. Uh, but everybody wants to win, man. Nobody wants to go home. And that's why it's so competitive. That's why when March Madness rolls around, you see all these great, great games, and, and you just walk away shaking your head saying, wow, that was, that was a hell of a game. Um, it's just different, you know. Playing for a Big Ten title, it's different. Um, the play is, is, is so intense, and that's how it should be. You know, it's like NBA playoff. You know, it's, the level of play just goes to a different level. First row in the middle. Tyler Tashman with Inside the Hall. Um, Coach, you've known uh, Race and Trace now for almost a year. Um, what is your favorite part about coaching them? And, and what particularly do they do that embodies what you want this program to be about? Well, you know, when I took the job over and Trace allowed me to, to coach him, I told him in front of his parents that that I'm not an easy coach, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna challenge you and push you. And if you allow me to do that, I think you will grow as a player. And he's, he's done that. He's allowed me to actually coach and push him. And I know there's days he walks out of that gym, you know, pissed at me. But hey, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's just coaching, man. I, you know, as long as he knows that I love him and I'm in his corner, that, that means more to me than anything. Race has been a tremendous, tremendous player this year for this team, man. I mean, when I took this job, you know, I was picking the coaches that were here about who can do this and who can do that. And, and, and you know, I was, I had done some of my own due diligence on watching film. And the one thing that came out of my coach's mouth that had been here, well, I don't know if you want this guy to handle the ball that much. Or, and he's a, he's a good player. He's going to work hard. And 
I told our guys it's our job to to get him where he's comfortable in handling the basketball, and it's our job to to get him comfortable in shooting threes. He's had all the other intangible parts going for him, and he's added that to his game this year, man, and it's been a treat to see him develop, man. It's been nice. It's been, and we've all benefited from it as a team, I think. First row near side. Mike, Zach Osterman, uh, Indianapolis Star. Going back to your relationship with Trace, you've been a Big Ten MVP. You've been, I imagine, what some people would describe the face of this program. Uh, that's kind of where he is now. How have you seen him navigate that, handle the pressure, the expectation, the attention, all those different kinds of things. It's been a roller coaster ride for him. You know, I mean, I've I've watched him, you know, really as a month ago, you know, it was so intense you could see it in his face, you know. You know, I mean, if these guys would stay the hell away from social media, you know, life might be a little <laughs> bit better, you know. <laughs> no, really. But, you know, he's dealing with the fact that he's he's a guy who could possibly go to the NBA. He's you know, he could possibly be an all, you know, an all American. All these things are going through this young man's mind. Can you win the Big Ten? You know, can you win a couple of games in the Big Ten tournament? I mean, there's a lot of things that are at, at, at stake. And I get it, you know, it's a part of playing this game. And my whole thing to him is hey, you can't wear it, you got to cherish the moment and still grind and work. I mean, you can't run from it. And I thought he stepped up big time, man, in, in the Big Ten tournament. I mean, he he took it to another level, which was kind of nice to see. Second row in the middle. Hey, Coach. Uh, Chris Hagan, Fox 59, Indianapolis. Congratulations for Thank making you. the tourney. Uh, sometimes you know a team's identity at the very start of the season. Sometimes it evolves and changes. As we sit here right now, what is the identity of this team as you go into the tourney? Defense has always been our identity, you know, and uh, I made that very clear when I took the job uh, that we had to establish a defensive system because offensively I just didn't know where it was going to come from. And uh, I knew if we did that, we would put ourselves in a tremendous position to win, a, win games. Unfortunately, we've lost a lot of games down the stretch. Um, and, you know, I – I take blame for a lot of that because these young guys, they, they're still learning and trying to figure it out, figure me out, and I get it. Um, but defense is where we've, where we've been good in terms of being able to compete all year. And, and as we go into this tournament, we're going to have to stay at that level uh, because I've always felt defense win titles. I mean, it, it gives you an opportunity to it. I look at it that way. Second row, uh, near side. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CNH. I coach, you've coached a number of NBA playoff series. I guess this would be like a, a game seven or an elimination game. Anyone you reach out to in the college world for advice or anything that you could draw from from that in terms of maybe your approach in, in your first NCAA tournament game? No, I mean, I got calls from Coach Calipari and, and Larry Brown, who's, you know, two of my closest friends. Um, you know, that wish me well. Um, but they don't need to give me, you know, at the end of the day, man, I've coached enough basketball and uh, been around in a, a long time, man. It's, it's about getting these guys pumped and ready to go, man, and sustaining it over a 40 minute ball game. That's what it's going to be about. First row. Straight Indiana. Mike, we haven't had a chance to talk much about your interaction with your three assistant coaches a whole lot this year, but what f from those three guys is, have you uh, gained and learned across, across the course of this season as well in regards to working so well together as a staff? Well, again, I mean, they all been in the college game, and I've spent all my life in the NBA game, and but I've always believed coaching is coaching. I don't care what level you coach at, but they have helped me navigate through this college season from recruiting, uh, you know, the things I can do from uh, recruiting. Um, I mean, they, they've they helped me so much. I mean, things I can say and not, you know, do and not do. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a lot of little things when it comes to the NCAA that 
you know, you got to be careful of. And, um, you know, when I took the compliance test, man, I mean, it, it's tricky. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of things that I shake my head and say, okay, wow. But no, they, they've been able to help me. They, they've been great in terms of practice plans and helping me, you know, the, you know, at the end of the day, we all get together and we, you know, we come up with the, a plan and I make the final decision on, you know, how we're going to go into that game and play it. And live or die, they're going to have to roll with me. And and it's, it's pretty much been a learning curve for them too, you know, trying to get to know my style and, and what I'm about from a coaching standpoint. And, and I like to think that I've helped them in that area grow a little bit as coaches. Um, you know, I always believed as a head coach, you know, you you work with your assistant coaches to put them in position one day that they might be a head coach. You know, I mean, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Let's go to the second row here, far side. Hey, Coach. Jeff Rapp, JohnSpeaks.com. What was Jordan Geronimo able to do in practice today, and do you anticipate him being able to play tomorrow? I think he's going to play. Uh, you know, he worked a little bit today in practice, so we'll see how it goes. I, um, I'll get a better feel when he wakes up in the morning uh, and see where he is. Let's go uh, second row, near side. Yeah, Coach Mike Schumann with the Daily Hoosier. There, there, there's a lot of talk about, you know, as the season grinds on, you know, some coaches like to keep players off their feet a little bit, not practice as hard as they did. W what's your philosophy on that, and how has the, the last week with so many games impacted your approach? Well, I'm still learning. You know, we, we haven't grinded as much. Um, based on all the games that have been coming at us. Um, but I still always try to get conditioning in. You know, I think that's, you know, our conditioning is fun and it's with the basketball. So that's every day. Uh, but the banging and, and going up and down, you know, we've kind of gotten away from that a little bit based on the fact that we've had so many injuries, you know. I mean, people don't mention it, you know, I mean, we lost Galloway for 14 games, man, and and Rob for 10 games, I think it is. And when we started this journey, you know, they were a major piece to the puzzle. And, you know, I like to think if I'd had them all the way through, man, things would have been a little bit different. But that's a part of basketball. Um, but it's good that we got them back now. Let's go uh, second row, far side. Mike Peckham from Peaks.com. Uh, Coach, what have you learned about uh, Wyoming at this point? What concerns you about them? Very, very well coached. Big team. You know, you used to start a 6'7", 6'6", 6'7", point guard. That should tell you a lot. Um, you know, Hunter is as good as they come at the point guard spot. Um, they got a big presence inside with Ike. And then they got perimeter guys and Xavier and Drake and Odin, you know, guys that can make shots. Uh, so they're well balanced. And you don't win 25 games not being well balanced. So, you know, we got to commit for 40 minutes. It's kind of how I look at it on both ends of the floor and compete, man, in order to come out of here with a win. Let's go uh, second row in the middle. Uh, Dustin DePierre, Bloomington Herald Times. Uh, Trace mentioned when we were talking to him that, that he had basically come to you recently and approached you about uh, running more pick and roll, basically, that he thought that was something that was going to work. Uh, when did that conversation happen? And how did he approach you? And, and do you like, I guess, your players coming with that kind of input uh, to game plans? No, I think it's great. You know, I'm always open. I've always had an open door policy with our players. Um, you know, if you go back and look at the beginning of our season and probably midway through our season, you know, we tried to run a lot of pick and rolls, but X wasn't there yet at the time. And X has grown so much that it's allowed me to play what I came here to, as a coach to, to play offense is play some good pick and roll along with post up. It's got to be a balance and a mixture. And we struggled in the pick and roll early on in the season. And I just kept, you know, piecing it in here and there, here and there. And now X has, he's grown. He's figured it out. 
And when I say figure it out, he's figured it out to a point where he knows when he's got it, he knows when he doesn't have it, he knows when the lob or the pocket pass is there or the throwback. All of that takes time, and uh, he's starting to figure it out. That's why we, you're starting to see more pick and roll play. Just a few more questions here for Coach Woodson. Uh, we'll go first row in the middle. Gracie Barra inside the hall. Trace talked about fatigue not being an issue, and you talked about conditioning. But when you're playing four games in the span of six days, how do you mentally prepare your team for that kind of schedule? It's what it is. You know, I mean, really. I mean, you can't run from it. You know, you guys as media, you know, you put it out there with maybe fatigue. You know, guys, you got four games in four days. Hey, this is what you signed up for. You know, and, and again, I say it, these guys are 19, 18, 20-year-old young men, they, they'll be just fine. You just got to go play. Second row in the middle. Coach, uh, Chris Hagan again, Fox Indianapolis. I'm, I'm sure it's different in the college game than the pro game, but we see so many runs this time of year that can determine a game. Do you have a formula about how to end a run or maybe take a time out, letting guys play through it, or is it just kind of a gut feeling? Well, uh, college game, you don't have enough timeouts to me. The NBA, we – <laughs> we got a lot of timeouts to kill runs. You know, I, you know, I, I, I've gone through this season, man, and I can't remember. It was a game, I think, on the road where somebody might have been Minnesota, and everybody was barking about, you know, make call timeout, you know, kill the run. Well, sometimes it's coaches. I want to see who's going to step up and kill the run themselves for our team. And – you know, Minnesota, we were able to do that, you know, without me burning all the timeouts. Uh, you know, my coaches always tell me I got to have at least one or two at the end. And, you know, I, I, all the time I've coached in the NBA, I've only used all, my timeouts, all of them, one time. And so sometimes you got to put it in the player's hands and, and feel good about it. Um, and then sometimes you got to, you know, make the move to, to call the timeout to kill the run. Last question uh, here in the front row in the middle. Tyler Cashman with Inside the Hall. Um, Coach, you've mentioned a couple of times this season just about um, not only wanting to create great basketball players, but also turn them into men and people that are going to go out in the world and society. Um, why, is it some, why is that something that's important to you? Because a guy by the name of Bob Knight did that for me. And I owe it to these young men to do the same thing. Uh, basketball is such a short-lived career in terms of dribbling the ball up and down the floor. You know, these young guys don't know that right now. They think that it's something that's going to last the rest of their life. But there's going to come a time when you can't do it anymore. And that time comes very quickly. You know, there's, it's not a lot of LeBrons and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's that have played 19 and 20 years in the league it just doesn't happen if you're fortunate enough to get there. So, you know, you got to rely on your education, which is first and foremost with me. And then basketball is secondary. And if you're fortunate enough to move on, great. If not, it's my job to try to see that you go out in the work workforce and figure it out if I can help you in that area. Coach Woodson, thank you so much for your time. Good luck right. tomorrow night. Thank you.
At this time, I'd like to welcome the Wyoming Cowboys student athletes uh, joining us. At the end is Graham E.K., uh, the middle, uh, Drake Jeffries, and uh, the individual closest to me is Hunter Maldonado. Questions for our student athletes? So we'll start second row on the far side. Jeff Rabjohns, Pigs.com. Hunter, this is for you. I, I've seen you described a whole bunch of different ways. Point guard, point forward. You know, some people have just said basketball player. I, I, how do you describe yourself? What do you see? Okay, you're really good at what, and what is your position? Or positions, plural. Yeah. No, I think I do whatever the team needs. Um, and I see myself, as you said before, as just a basketball player. I go out there, I handle the ball, uh, get it to the guys that need to get the ball if they're hot, whether – um, Drake's hit a couple shots or Graham's going to work in the post and um, just kind of facilitate and uh, make sure I'm the leader of this team. We have uh, quite a few individuals uh, joining us via Zoom. If, you, if you'd like to ask a question to our student athletes, we, we ask that you just use the hand feature and we'll make sure to get you on there for your question. Let's go to the, uh, to the back row. Connor Bruce, University of Dayton. So, you know, guys are an at-large bid into the tournament, you know, uh, sneaking in. So just kind of what have the last few days been like? You know, Selection Sunday was just a few days ago, and now you're here and uh, playing games. So what, what has that been like the last few days? Uh, the last few been a whirl uh, whirlwind, honestly, you know. We, we were on the bubble, uh, as everybody knew. Um, so we were just, you know, praying for the best. Uh, and when we saw our name get called, you know, it was – Super exciting, um, you know, the, the place was electric. We had a blast that day, or yesterday, and you know, it's just been, it's been so much fun the past 24 hours, you know, getting to live out a dream. Drake, thanks. Uh, Graham, you want to add to that? Um, yeah, you know, it's just like a moment we've been waiting for, like as a, like for our whole lives as a kid, you know, you dreamed of playing on the stage, and dreamed of playing in the big dance. So when we heard our name called, super exciting, you know, just couldn't wait to be here. Hunter, your response? Uh, I just think adding on to both of those, like they said, it's been very quick turnaround. Obviously, yesterday we found out we were coming um, and had to fly out here today and come in and get ready for the game tomorrow. But super exciting, and like Graham said, it's a dream for sure. A second row, far side. Uh, Dustin DePierak, Bloomington Herald Times. Uh, Hunter, I know you talked a little bit about, I think, your, your sort of play style uh, before I got in here. But what um, – is Xavier Johnson obviously is is their point guard plays with really fast out seems like yours is very slow deliberate very you know very you know just controlling I guess uh, how do you expect that matchup to go what have you sort of learned uh, about Johnson so far watching film on him and how do you expect this sort of contrast of styles to go uh, no I think it's um, something we've kind of seen in our conference uh, with teams pushing the pace and then having some three or four teams that do slow it down um, so it's not the first time we've seen it and it'll just kind of be a team effort and um, trying to play to our style and stick to our habits. Let's go back to the second row here. Jeff Rabjohns, Peaks.com. Graham, I'm curious, your thoughts watching film with Trace Jackson Davis. How do you feel you match up with him? And when you look at him, what do you see? Is there a player you compare him to? And, or maybe just give me your descriptions of what stands out. Um, you know, he's a great player, um, left-handed player like myself. I see him. Um, how he likes to play in the post. And I think it's a great matchup, something I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, a great player, his caliber, you always dream of playing people like that at this level. Um, yeah, so I'm just really looking forward to it. I don't really compare him to any player. Just would try to watch the film and study him. Other questions for our student athletes? We'll go to the back row. Yeah, Matt DeMarco, University of Dayton. Um, what are your expectations going into this first game of the tournament? Uh, I think we're just, we're going to go out there and play our hardest for sure. Um, you know, we're going to watch the film, like Graham said. We're going to lock in, um, you know, and then, you know, just we really pride ourselves on defense. So, you know, we're going to sit down and try to get stops and, and, you know, just do what we do and, and not do too much. Obviously, it's big dance, big stage. You know, I think we're just going to do what, what we do, you know, at our best. Let's go uh, to our to our journalists on Zoom. As uh, Patrick, your question for our student athletes. Hey guys, this is Patrick Waring from the NBS Sports Hour. Um, I want to ask you guys about Coach Wicks. He brings a lot of energy. He brings the juice. 
just want to kind of kind of ask you guys what what does he mean to you how uh, how how has he helped you guys Graham you want to start um yeah I love coach Wicks to death as you said he's the energy guy the juice guy we call him the the juice man um because he's always bringing that juice and he's always making sure that we're dialed in um you know he's he's been a great coach my past two years that I've been here and he's just done nothing but helped me get better I'm really grateful for that Drake man like, like Graham said I love coach Wicks to death um you know he's one heck of a person, uh, make sure that, you know, we're locked in all day, every day. And if, if we're not on our P's and Q's, then he's going to get on us. Um, and, you know, he's got, he's got a little bit of stuff to him. So, you know, he's, he's a real, real one out there. He's a, he's a real dude and will we'll, uh, really hold you accountable. No, I think more than these two guys here, uh, Wicks is our uh, guards coach, so I get to spend a lot of time with him, um, breaking down film, um, doing individuals with him. And he's a, he's a great guy, great coach. Like, We've said many times, brings the juice every day without without fail, um, and he's a great guy you can rely on. Second row, uh, Dustin Napier again, Bloomington Herald, Herald Times. Kind of want to go back to Hunter's answer and involve all, all of you guys. Like what uh, what allows you guys to control pace when you want to? When some when a team wants to speed you up, go faster, uh, you know, just to try to get you guys running. What do you think you guys do well to keep the game from going that way and just to play the style and the pace that you want to? Um, you know, I really just think it started in the summer, you know, just all the reps that we do playing five on five. Um, that really just helps us. We know our pace. We know um, that we can't get sped up and we just got to stay in our game and just keep playing together. Yeah, like Graham said, it goes back to the summer. Um, I mean, we worked out every day. Uh, you know, we, we played played a lot of five on five this past summer. Um, but, you know, when, when teams try to speed us up, you know, we just take a deep breath, settle down and, and just get back to our roots. And, you know, you fall back on your training. Yeah, I think, like they both said, they've already covered it. Uh, it goes back to the summer, all the preparation of guys kind of crawling into us, this, this non-con and uh, the past couple games uh, into that conference tournament, people trying to speed us up um, and crawl up under us. But at the end of the day, if we stick to what we know, we stick to our habits, um, I think we can do a really good job of, of being who we are. Patrick, do you have uh, another question for our student athletes? Oh, no, sorry about that. I think uh, I accidentally left my hand up. Oh, you're fine. For the individuals in front of us, any more questions here for these three men? We'll go to the, the third row. Thanks. Jim Fox, AP. You're going to be playing a really storied program a couple hours from their school. Um, how do you think that'll affect you, and what are you concerned about with uh, playing a program like that? Uh, I think I think we know. I mean, obviously, Indiana is a blue blood, basically. Um, very storied program, very good program. Um, Coach Woodson's done a very well, jo a very good job over there. Um, but you know, it's it's basically be almost like a home game for them. Um, so you know, we're we're expecting expecting to be a lot of Indiana fans in here. Um, you know, I, it's about four hours away from where I'm from, so I know I know we'll have a couple of Wyoming fans in here as well. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for that, and you know, I, I just think that you know, it'll be it'll be a fun environment for sure. Like Drake said, it'll be a great environment, but really, it's just a great opportunity for us as a team, um, just to keep building on this great season that we've been having. So that's where that's what that is. Yeah, I think on top of that, um, obviously. Uh, our non-con prepared us for a team like this, being able to play Arizona, um, some of those teams away. Uh, they're all conference or all tournament teams as well. Um, so we just got to go out there, stick to what we know. Uh, we're a tournament team here too. We're here to play them. So at the end of the day, if we do what we do, I think we'll put ourselves in a good position. We'll go to the second row. Uh, Ryan Thorburn with the Star Tribune. Uh, guys, it's been literally almost exactly 24 hours since your name popped up there. Can you just take us through what you've done in the last 24 hours to get ready for this game? Hunter, you want to start? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so obviously, like you said, um, we had that watch party, turned around, figured out uh, kind of when we were leaving to come here. Um, so go back, watch all the film, get to, get to know their personnel, and then um, kind of just get here today, have some practice. Um, go over a, a couple more things, stuff they like to do tonight, and then go out and play. Yeah, basically what what Maldo said, you know, we um, just watch watch film, um, just 
get ready to go, get locked in mentally. Quick turnaround, obviously, the end of our schedule, we had played four games in seven days, so we were ready to go. Uh, we're used to quick turnarounds. Um, I mean, I, and I had, personally, I had uh, homework for my internship, had to write an article about, you know, my emotions of what's been going on lately with, with this uh, past 24 hours, but it's been, it's been fun. Grant? Um, yeah, these two pretty much hit it on the head, but just a lot of film, trying to see what these guys do and study them and going through some walkthrough stuff um, just so we can be prepared as possible. Follow-up question? Graham, does their, uh, does their big guy that you were kind of Googling yesterday, do, have you watched film of him? Does he remind you of anyone you've faced? Um, not necessarily anyone I face. Um, he reminds me a lot of myself just because he's left-handed, so I understand um, a little bit of those tendencies. But just watching his game, um, I, like, I like the way he plays, and I just like how physical he is, and it should be a good matchup. Any other question? Gentlemen, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Good luck tomorrow night. Have fun.
the press conference for the uh, first four. And so we introduce the head coach of the Wyoming Cowboys, Jeff Linder, out of the Mountain West Conference. The Cowboys this year were 25 and 8. Reminder, no flash photography, uh, no video recording, and please silence your phone. Uh, for those individuals that are watching on Zoom, uh, if you'd like to ask a question, just make sure you use the hand feature. Uh, Coach, if you'd like, just open up with a statement in regards to your basketball team. Well, um, you know, first, you know, just really excited to be here. Um, it's my third time here. Uh, hopefully the third time is a charm, having been here twice as an assistant uh, in 2013 and 2015, um, knowing that um, you know, the opportunity to play in the first four can be a, a springboard that's been for a lot of teams, in the case in 13 with LaSalle and 15 uh, with Dayton. And um, you know, just you know, the team that I have, and, you know, and we're really unique uh, in terms of kind of how we're constructed and how we play. And um, you know, for them to have the opportunity to kind of showcase that and show that on a national stage, um, I'm excited for that opportunity for them. And we've got a great group of kids um, that have really, in, in two years, when I got the job um, back in March of 2020, when the, when the pandemic started, and we're still wearing masks two years later, but to, to think that uh, what those kids have done in a two-year period of time when we had, um, the year before when I got the job, they had won seven games six years before that. And for us to, in two years with COVID and, and my staff, we know the thing was we never made excuses. Um, that was the thing we always talked to our guys is that regardless of what's going on, I mean, you know, we got to find a way every day to get better. And I think over the course of two years, um, you know, that's what these guys have bought into. And um, I think that's the reason why we're here right now, being 25 and 25 and 8 and, and getting an at-large bid when probably two years ago a lot of people thought that would never be possible. Opening up the floor to questions. Uh, we, with questions, we do ask that you just address your name and affiliation uh, before you ask your question to coach. We'll start in the second row. Uh, Ryan Thorburn, the Star Tribune. Jeff, you'll have to refresh my memory. How did did you guys play in those two Boise State games? Did you play well or not well or run into good opponents? And what did you learn from those experiences to try and get these guys ready in such a short amount of time? Well, in 13, we played LaSalle, and, uh, man, they had a, a tremendous backcourt. I know about four minutes into that game, and we had a good team. I was like, man, we're, we're in trouble tonight. It was like we were on skates. And, and I think you know, from that game, LaSalle, Sweet 16 or Elite 8. And then, um, unfortunately, we're the, the first team in NCAA history to – Play, uh, play a road game in the NCAA tournament. We played Dayton in 2015, played that game down to the wire. And uh, Coach Miller, after that, I think they went to the Sweet Seat 16 as well. And so, um, you know, good experiences. I mean, Dayton is an incredible city, incredible host. I mean, you can't ask for a better place to have this. And um, it's an opportunity where if you can kind of get out in front and, and get that first win underneath your belt, um, it takes a little bit of that pressure off you, especially when the other team's kind of waiting for you. Stay in the second row. Uh, Cody Tucker, 7220 Sports. Jeff, um, now you've had Graham for a full year uh, against teams with people in the building. Uh, what have you learned most about your big man on and off the court this year? Uh, you know, I think not so much what I've learned about him is just more so I think what he's learning. You know, being that he's, you know, really is his first full year, having come off a torn ACL, a senior year of high school, not being cleared to play until – the middle of January of last year and would never have played him. I mean, was we were always under the impression that he was going to redshirt, but when he was able to play, you know, given the free COVID year, uh, for him to be able to kind of get that experience um, was invaluable. But knowing, too, that he wasn't able to do anything five on five, um, he wasn't in, you know, tip-top shape, and then now a year later and you look at him and, um, you know, just for him to see, I mean, there's, there's no other player in the country that's been doubled as much as he has. I mean, we know from – you know, you guys know from watching us, you know, watching us play in league. I mean, you know, usually he's getting doubled every time down the floor. His usage rate is probably higher than any player, post player in the history of college basketball. I mean, as a team right now, I mean, we're probably, I think, 400 possessions ahead of Purdue in terms of playing through the post and passing out of the post. And so, um, you know, his, his, you know, this year for him to see, you know, every single type of double team, every type of coverage, um, you know, those are the type, those possessions are invaluable. And, um, and he's had to have some growing pains. I mean, COVID, the one thing about COVID is it wasn't a regular, a real, a real season in terms of feeling the grind of the schedule. It was a grind because if you had to test and all the stuff going on. And, but in terms of actually going through a real 30 to 31 game schedule where you had to play you know, a game on Friday, then Saturday, then Monday, and then Tuesday, 
um, they didn't experience that. And when you have a team as young as mine, where in your top seven players, you have four COVID freshmen and one true freshman, uh, you know, those four COVID freshmen didn't feel what that real season felt like. And I think that, you know, when we got to mid-February this year, uh, you could tell that our guys had hit a little bit of a wall, especially how our schedule and conference got so condensed, um, you know, with the COVID and, and the makeup schedule. And so um, I think that was the biggest thing is just knowing kind of how your body is going to feel late and, and knowing, too, that it's, you know, he was the most fouled player in the country all year long. I mean, he was averaging almost eight and a half fouls drawn per 40 minutes. And naturally, as the season goes on, especially when you get to the middle of February, early March, you don't get as many fouls called. And so you have to learn how to adjust. And I think that's the biggest thing for him is just, you know, learning how to adjust with the way that the game's being called, with how the other team's playing you, and um, just the flow of the season, which none of those guys had really felt. Let's go to the uh, third row. Uh, Dustin the Pirac, Bloomington Herald Times. What, uh, what is it about Hunter Maldonado that allows him to just sort of maintain his pace and sort of the deliberate nature of what he does? And obviously Xavier Johnson at Indiana is a guy that likes to play really, really fast. How do you sort of see that contrast of styles playing out? Yeah, well, Maldo knows that uh, when he plays fast, I get mad at him. You know, he's, <laughs> he's uh, you know, the way that, you know, the way that we use him and the way that he plays, I mean, uh, being that he's six foot six, six foot seven, and you know we use him as a, I mean, we're we're really unorthodox in terms of just using him as a kind of the old school Mark Jackson, Gary Payton, uh, Charles Barkley gets gets get him into a lot of dribble downs to where you know he can use his size. He's an incredible passer, and you know people think it looks easy to be able to dribble down, you know, and just back your guy down from 19 feet. Well, it's 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 really in reality hard to do. And uh, he's got great body control. He was a post player in high school. And so he just naturally knows how to feel his way around. And so, um, and he's a guy too that forces the other team to decide, okay, you know, if you're gonna play, if you're gonna try to guard him small, um, you know, being six foot six, six foot seven, I mean, he puts a lot of pressure on you in terms of being able to score. And if you try to put a bigger guy, then now he's, he's quick enough and he's shifty enough to where, you know, he can create angles, um, you know, that way too. And so, He's a uh, he's a tough matchup, and in the case you know of Xavier Johnson, I mean, having watched him on film and and having watched Andy, Indiana actually quite a bit during the uh, regular season, just knowing that in, in in my time as a you know as assistant coach at Boise when I ran the offense, as a head coach in Northern Colorado last year at Wyoming, you know my teams had always been offensively one of the top teams in the country in terms of you know the number of possessions played in the ball screen, and knowing that. Um, that wasn't going to be the case this year when we lost Marcus Williams to Texas A&M is that, you know, Maldo's not necessarily a guy that you're going to put in that many ball screens. And so uh, with him and then you add Graham E.K. to the mix, knowing that I was going to play through those two guys, well, the Big Ten is the one league in the country where, I mean, you're playing through the post, most of the teams, whether that's Purdue, Indiana, uh, Illinois, you know, Michigan, I mean, you're playing through the post, Michigan. And so I watched a lot of Big Ten basketball just watching how, some of those teams try to, you know, utilize their post players and some of the different things they did, knowing that, um, you know, that's how we played. And so then now you watch Indiana on film, and in a lot of ways they mirror us um, in terms of, you know, Trace being on the on the right side of the floor, playing to his left hand, Race on the left side, playing through his right hand, and then you got the X factor in Xavier Johnson, who, um, you know, from a talent standpoint, is as talented as any guard out there. Let's go to the back row. Uh, yes, Coach. Um, you take a job, I know you want to turn things around quickly, but you go from 14 to 25 wins, is that pretty quick? Well, and last year with, with the shortened schedule, um, you know, obviously, I mean, and, and we probably, when we got our full team, and we never really had our full team last year without EK, and then we had some injuries to guys. Um, so I thought that what we did last year, considering, you know, you get the job during COVID, you have a, pretty much an entire new roster. I mean, I only kept four guys when I got the job. Knowing with COVID, it was going to be hard to kind of, you know, get enough guys good enough at that level. And so I only signed, you know, we only had 11 scholarship players last year. And we were sitting a couple guys out. Um, and then this year, based, you know, when, when you lose a guy that was freshman of the year in the league, and people are thinking, no, they're not going to be as good. Uh, but in reality, we knew that with what we had and knowing that Graham E.K. was going to be a year older and, and he was going to be a guy that now all our guys, because – you know, when you had such a young team, we had no summer to work work out. We had really no fall. Um, we had so few guys, and you're dealing with all the COVID stuff that you really weren't able to practice. I mean, you were just trying to survive. And um, and so we, that, that really hurt us on the defensive end of the floor, and our guys knew that uh, for us to take that next step, especially in our league, which is, you know, this year, I mean, obviously with four teams in the NCAA tournament, 
um, is a league where you got to be good defensively if you're going to beat a San Diego State, a Boise State, or a Colorado State. And so we knew we had to get better on that end. But to be able to actually be able to practice in the summertime, to be able to practice in the fall, and for those young guys to be able to get the, the reps that they needed to get better, I think that was really the big difference. Let's uh, jump on Zoom here. As uh, Patrick, uh, you have a question for Coach? Go ahead. Yes, Coach. Uh, this is Patrick Waring from the NBS Sports Hour. Uh, I asked the guys about this earlier. I asked them about Coach Wicks. Just, um, just wanted to kind of get your thoughts of, of what he means uh, to your program. Well, I mean, Coach Wicks, along with Coach DeWeese, who was with me for four years at Northern Colorado, and Coach V, who somebody that was with me, who I've known for 20 years, back when he was, you know, playing overseas professionally and living in, in, in Denver, Colorado. And, you know, I think not just Coach Wicks, but all those guys in general. I mean, for in order for you to have – for us to make the jump that we've had in such a short period of time, I mean, you have to have a, a staff, a really good staff, and a staff that's really together and – um, and that's what I have. I mean, I have a staff that um, there's no ego. There's no in recruiting that's my guy. Or there's no there's just no I. And um, and when you have that and I think players too know when and there's a lot of staffs that they're in, in Division One basketball that are not together. I mean, there's just there are a lot of agendas, a lot of egos. And uh, I do. I think the players sense that. And I, I learned from my time at at uh, Boise State under Coach Rice and him during his time when he was at Gonzaga is just the importance of, of having the right staff and having a staff that you can you know, have some cohesion, you have some synergy, and you have some consistency. And, that w and by having that, you can have sustained success. And so um, the energy that Coach, Coach Wicks brings every day, it's contagious. Um, you, know, you have to have guys that are different than me. Uh, and Coach, Coach Wicks definitely helps offset my personality and, and, and really helps our, our guys in terms of just bringing that energy every day. That's why he's, that's why he's called the juice man. Any more uh, questions for Coach Linder? We'll go to the uh, second row. Jeff, with the young group, we've talked about this all year. They are so young. What is making it this far going to do for this group and the future of your program? I mean, I think the biggest thing is just to validate. I mean, we coach them hard. And um, in this day and age, I mean, Sometimes people say, you know, you can't can't coach them hard. Well, I mean, if they know you know what you're doing, if they know that you know you can get them better and, and that you care about them, um, you can coach them hard. And, and and we coach them hard every day. I mean, that starts in June first, and and it doesn't it doesn't relent. And um, and when you have guys that want to be coached, and there's some days when they don't want to hear it, but um, you know, more days than not, uh, you know, you just continue to grow. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing with this group is it, even though they're young, they're really mature, they're really smart. Um, obviously, we have a, almost a 3-5 team GPA, but the things that we can grasp and that we can handle, and I think that's where like in an opportunity like this where we've had to experience this already once, you know, a couple times this year on a quick turnaround, having to play San Diego State for the first time on a one-day turnaround, having to go play UNLV on a one-day turnaround without having played in before. Um, I think those experiences um, – you know, help us hopefully tomorrow night. Just a reminder in regards to questions, if you could please address your name and your affiliation. We'll stay with the second row. Uh, Ryan Coburn, Star Tribune again. Um, Jeff, I guess one of the benefits of being the first four is everyone in the country is going to be watching the game and, and getting ready to fill out their 64 team bracket and see who's in there. So what can that exposure do for the program? And, and next time you go out on the, on the trail, you don't have to sell the vision to the, your next group. You've, you've done it. Yeah, I mean, I think it just goes back to, to Cody's question, just the validation, you know, going back to, you know, what we do every day, you know, how hard it is over the you know, over course of a period of time. And now our guys know, like, well, yeah, there's a reason why Coach is a little bit crazy now and then. There's a reason why he's telling, hey, there's, there's no days off. And, um, you know, to be able to get the NCAA tournament helps validate that. And I think, you know, on the recruiting trail, it's, you know, when, when you're able to say, hey, we played in the NCAA tournament, we were able to get the NCAA tournament, we were able to get an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament, which is almost near impossible to do when there's 360 other Division I teams. Um, you know, it just, it just helps you continue to grow the program, and that's in two years. I think we've come a long, long ways, but um, we still got a long ways to go. Any more questions for Coach? Taking a look at Zoom. Coach, congratulations on a great season. Have fun tomorrow night. Good luck. Thank you.